This is a special edition of KTSM 9 News Small Town Spotlight. KTSM 9 News at 5 is on the road again as we continue with our Small Town Spotlight series made possible by the fine folks over at Charlie Clark Nissan. We are coming to you live today from San Elizario, a truly historic gem here in the borderland as you take a look at the historic San Elizario Chapel. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Andy Morgan. And I'm Monica Cortez. And so today marks our fourth installment of our summer series. And just a reminder for our very loyal viewers is that, okay, so this is the fourth stop that we're making. Yep. Last week we were at Clint yep. and that was just phenomenal. Remember Ramirez Pecan Farms. And today we're right in front of the mission, the iconic San Elisario, uh, you know, chapel. And so I learned, Andy, that um, this town was was, I guess, founded in 1877. You want to know the, the main thing? When we started saying we're going to do this small town mm -hmm. spotlight series, the thing that I thought of was San Elizario first and this <sighs> shot Me right too. here. This Me is too. exactly what I thought about. This is what we're kind of doing with this uh, small town spotlight series. And of course, San Elizario, much um, like uh, some of our other stops that we have made, uh, right on the Rio Grande here. Mm -hmm. So it kind of forms, of course, the US Mexico border, as we know. And it's more than just a stop on I-10, right? We think about going back and forth on I-10, whether you're going to Dallas or San Antonio, it's more than just a stop that you get gas. There is a lot to do here and a lot of history. Oh, absolutely. And part of that history, did you know that San Elisario was first called Presidio de San Elisario? Then obviously it was remained, yep. renamed. And so we have a really cool package on the history. Check it out. The original uh, name of the place was San Elciar. San Elciar is a patron saint of soldiers, and they used to use that for the town. But what happened was when non-Spanish speaking people came in, they could not say Elciar, so they could say Elisario. So they changed the spelling to, so that people could pronounce it better that didn't speak Spanish, to E-L-I-Z-A-R-I-O. We have a long history here. Uh, that we came from hardworking people that makes people proud of where they came from and who they are and who they've become. The church has maintained its, its structure. It stayed the same. The placita, which is under the, the county, it has been man maintained. So it's helpful that uh, people realize that this is important. And the tourists like to come here. They like to come here and see the the historic building, the Portales, the first schoolhouse in the county of El Paso, the jail, the first jail in the county of El Paso is from 1850. Well, we, we uh, continue to do advertisements to, uh, to have people come in and visit us. The schools also promote the town, like in the old days, they really didn't, there wasn't too much to study about Hispanic culture, it was more about the East Coast. And I'm thinking maybe uh, the El Paso schools need to promote it a little bit more than they probably do. I think slowly they're giving us, uh, they're giving the town, the history of this town, more publicity, but in the beginning there, there wasn't any, I don't think. When people from El Paso come down here and, uh, or from whatever place, but especially from El Paso, they're surprised. They don't know that this place existed. They don't really teach it in the schools, so they don't know that it's there. But a lot of people that do come in say, wow, that's the first time I've been here, and I've been in El Paso all my life. It's like, where have you been? 